About three years ago, we bought this 1960s house that was in rough shape, but I saw a lot of potential in it. And apparently, Andrea saw something in this house that other people didn't because this house sat on the market for almost a year, which meant we could get a pretty good deal on it. And as soon as we moved in, we got to work trying to turn this place around. And the results of that hard work have been absolutely beautiful. And so in today's video, we want to give you a house tour and show you as much of that transformation process as we can. But let's back up a bit because this is actually not the first house that we have bought and renovated while living in it with our family. Shortly after we got married, we purchased our first home, which was actually a foreclosure. We were young, had almost no budget at all, but we still wanted to make our first home into a place that we really loved. Over the next seven years, we slowly renovated our home from top to bottom, and this is where Andrea first discovered that she really loved design and that she had a knack for using power tools and building incredible things. Seven years after purchasing this house, we were ready to sell it, and only a few hours after we listed it, we we had a buyer and we ended up selling it for over double what we bought it for. <laughs> Yo! Next, we moved into a slightly larger home that hadn't been updated at all since the 1980s. This time, we decided it would be better to try and knock out all of the major stuff like paint and flooring before we even got settled in. And so the grandparents kept our kids for an entire week and we slept very little while we worked pretty much day and night to try and knock out all of that paint and flooring so we could get everybody settled in. After that initial renovation, we took the next year to focus on finishing out the bedrooms and bathrooms in this home. This house also had a detached mother-in-law suite, which was the perfect space for Dean's growing business. And after two years, this home was completely transformed inside and out, and we were ready to put it on the market. But before our first showing was even scheduled, we had a potential buyer asking to come early, already wanting to purchase the house. So basically, we sold the house instantly. And so that brings us to the house that we're in now. And so we want to spend the rest of this video giving you a tour of this home and showing you the crazy transformation that's taken place. Really quick, we want to thank today's video sponsor, Athletic Greens. I was actually pretty excited about this one because many of you may not know, but my background and degree is actually in nutrition and I have used Athletic Greens in the past and loved it. And I want to go ahead and mention that Athletic Greens is going to give our viewers a free one year supply of their vitamin D drops as well as five of the travel packs with your first purchase when you use our link in the description below. AG1s by Athletic Greens can be a great way to support your New Year's resolutions by giving you the energy and immune support you need to accomplish your goals in the new year. It's a healthy daily habit that you can actually stick with, making it easy to invest in your health for the long run. I love that AG1 helps simplify the supplements that I have in my cabinet at home. It has 75 vitamins, minerals, whole foods, source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens in one convenient daily serving. This special blend of ingredients helps your body's nutritional needs and supports gut health, immunity, energy, recovery, focus, and aging. Okay, we have to talk about the taste because Obviously, it's not going to taste like a milkshake, but I actually really like the taste of it. It's subtle. I love that they didn't try and overpower it with all these strong flavors. So it has that like slight grassy taste that you would expect from a green drink, but honestly, it's the best green drink I've ever tasted. And just as a reminder, don't forget to use our link in the description below to get a year supply of vitamin D as well as the five free travel packs with your first purchase. We're going to start off this house tour with one of our favorite spaces, and that is the living room. When we first bought this house, this room was dark and really outdated, but we saw a ton of potential. We actually talked to the previous owners later, and they told us that their family called this the big room, and they never used it because it felt so dark and just uninviting. We started out by painting the entire room my favorite white, which is Benjamin Moore's Simply White, and about half of the room was painted already, this kind of off-white yellow color, and so we went ahead and painted the rest of the paneling along with the ceiling to make it feel brighter, more cohesive, and just more inviting in general. While paint was probably the single most impactful thing we did to change this space, the furnishings we chose also went a long way to make it feel more cozy, even though the space is massive. One of the challenges I have found in decorating a room that is this big is finding the right balance between not being too busy and cluttered, but also not feeling too sparse and empty. That means the furniture I chose had to be the right scale where it didn't feel so massive that it was a competing focal point, but didn't look just noticeably small and tiny in this large room. 
I started out by choosing a large 10 by 14 vintage style rug to help ground all of the furniture in the middle of the room. For the main furniture, we know we wanted to do two sofas with some coordinating chairs and I like to mix up the leg style on my main sofas and so we chose this beautiful leather article sofa with the mid-century style legs and then a slip covered white sofa with these chairs that incorporate a beige color with the wood on them and it just ties it together perfectly. And I just wanted to note that right here in the center of the living room is this coffee table, which so many people have said they absolutely love it. They ask Andrea where she got it from. Well, of course, she built this coffee table several years ago. It's come with us through a couple different houses now, and I love this. This is one of my favorite furniture builds from Andrea and it is the centerpiece of our living room. I feel like an often overlooked design elements that is super high impact is curtains. And for this room, I chose these beige curtains that are actually from Target of all places because it really helps to break up all of the white walls and it adds just this cozy, more sophisticated look with the really heavy drapes. This back wall back here felt a little bit tricky because I didn't want it to be the focal point of the room, but it is a large space and I wanted something to visually fill it. I ended up going with these white shelves and they fit the space perfectly, but I feel like the clean, simple lines of them make it where they don't feel so visually heavy or distracting in a bad way, while they still add a nice interest and a great bit of texture. One of our most recent projects in this living room was this beautiful fireplace. As I have been furnishing this room over the years, what I finally started kind of realizing and running into is there wasn't a clear focal point to help kind of ground and anchor this massive space. And I have been dreaming of building this fireplace since we first moved in here and started kind of putting two and two together, realizing that's like the focal point that this space needs to kind of help just center it all and not have all these kind of floating things to draw your eye to. But now you walk in and it's like, that's what you see. That's what everything is anchored off of. And it has totally changed the look and feel of this room. Next, we're going to be moving into our dining room. And the first big change is actually in this doorway right here, which used to be a small pocket door. The small pocket door felt a little bit strange connecting these two large rooms and it was a pretty easy decision to go ahead and take it out and just do a cased opening between the dining and living room. This space was pretty straightforward. We once again painted everything that same shade of white, laid the same flooring throughout the house, added the same curtains that we used in the living room, and then my biggest challenge was finding a table that was big enough to fit this space. I ended up finding this table at World Market and it's massive and fits this space perfectly and the chairs we found at a shop in Houston, which we also got a great deal on. Since this is a big open space, I decided to keep it really simple on this wall back there and did a massive oversized piece of artwork from Juniper Print Shop and made my own frame to hang it. It's pretty rare to find an old house like this with a massive dining space, but we are so thankful. We can actually fit our entire family as well as host friends in this space and we have really loved it. One last thing we changed in this space was to actually remove a small corner built-in cabinet that was right here. I just wasn't super crazy about the way it looked. It wasn't a lot of practical storage and I really like the clean look in the end. Next, we're going to step into the kitchen, which was easily one of the most dramatic transformations in this entire home. To be honest, we didn't think there was any way we would ever be doing a renovation of this scale, but an unfortunate incident turned out to be this unexpected blessing in the end. A few years ago, when we had gone out of town, we had a pipe burst in the wall, which ended up flooding our entire kitchen and all of the kitchen cabinets. Thankfully, insurance ended up covering all of the damages and because we were able to do a lot of the work ourselves, we were able to really stretch that budget they gave us and do all of the repairs and then a little bit of extra. One of the most common questions we get on our channel is, what color did you do your kitchen cabinets? And I'll include this in the description of the video as well, but it is a 50-50 mix of Sherwin-Williams Fender Gray and Cast Iron. And that is because as I was putting all of the paint swatches on the wall, I could not find a color that I liked. And so I played mad scientist and started mixing some of my little sample cups and realized that a 50-50 ratio of those was exactly what I wanted. But before you go and start picking paint colors based off of this information, I do wanna say you should definitely test colors in your space because this looks green and it is very subtly green in our space, which is what I wanted, but in a lot of areas it looks just gray and changes based on the lighting. 
I went with a raw unlockered brass for all of my hardware and I love the patina that it gets over time and probably my favorite part is these little latches that remind me a lot of European kitchens. For the countertops we stuck with quartz with this simple veining and we extended it up about 18 inches for the backsplash as well. So I think this kitchen turned out absolutely gorgeous and so did the company who helped do some of the renovations as the picture of this kitchen actually became their homepage picture uh, for the company and so for them and for us it was just a really cool experience and this space turned out just so gorgeous. Next we'll be moving into our master bedroom suite as well as a playroom but I feel like this area of the house deserves a bit of a backstory to explain exactly how it started. This whole section of the house used to be this crazy configured garage conversion that had an addition on the back of it that was supposed to be this library storage area and was just honestly weird. So we decided to put in a lot of hard work as well as hire a contractor and reconfigure this entire space into a master bedroom suite with a playroom and now it just honestly feels like this is how this house was meant to be all along. So this is our playroom which is essentially a dream for any young family with a lot of kids who have also homeschooled a lot but it definitely did not look like this when we moved in. So we ended up closing off some of the walls making this main opening bigger and now we have this funky L-shaped room which is so fun for a playroom. We added this rock climbing wall for the kids along with the platform and that fun little nook back there and this room is definitely unique and different but it is a really fun space for our kids to hang out. So this is our master bedroom which didn't even exist when we bought this house. And because this space wasn't even here to begin with, I really had a blank canvas to start with. Over the years, I've added a few things that really helped make this room feel more cozy and inviting. We added this wood feature wall with this warm rich stain which really changed the whole feel of this room. Two of our more recent projects in this room were refinishing this dresser and nightstand set and then adding this wood feature wall which I love. That rich warm stain really changed the whole feel of this room and looks so beautiful next to our upholstered green headboard. So this is our master bathroom. And just like the bedroom, this bathroom actually wasn't even here when we bought the house. Because this old house had some really quirky features that made it sit on the market for a while, we were able to get a great deal and had the budget to do this major renovation when we first bought the house. Two of my favorite features in this bathroom are this vintage piece that we transformed into our vanity and then this massive shower that we added. For the tile in this space, we went with this ceramic tile that I found at Floor & Decor that looks like marble and we carried the mosaic tile in the shower all the way up to the ceiling for really high impact. So that's it for this side of the house. Let's go take a look at the rest of the downstairs before we head upstairs. So this is our sunroom which also functions as our laundry room and mudroom and it's the main entrance that we use for the house. So originally this space was dark and super dingy, kind of like a dirty cave. Not the best first impression when you walk into our house. For the first makeover we did some basic just freshening up. I repainted the floors, repainted the walls, the ceilings. I hung curtains that were trying to hide these old aluminum dirty walls that really couldn't be helped except by hiding them. <laughs> the second transformation was totally unexpected and something we didn't ever think would get to happen. It actually came about because we had a massive hailstorm that demolished our roof and ruined the aluminum walls that used to hold up this sunroom. During that process, when we brought in our contractor, we actually figured out that there were no supports or beams holding up this entire roof. It was simply resting on these flimsy aluminum walls and so we decided to just completely rebuild this space and once again we did a lot of the work ourselves to try and really stretch that budget. During that renovation we pulled off the old drop down ceiling which came to about right here and made this space feel just so claustrophobic. We left it vaulted like this and added these pine planks to the ceiling which I did a really light wash stain on them. We shiplapped all of the walls and then painted them white and then added this beautiful herringbone tile that I found at Floor & Decor which looks a lot like an old brick but was super affordable. So let's go ahead and go back inside and we have two more spaces to show you before we go upstairs. So this is our office space and it has definitely received the least amount of love out of our entire house but we have some pretty massive plans for it later this year. I've been working on a mood board that has me super excited to see this space really get finished out. And just for the record, over the last year I've spent a lot of time in this room editing these videos. 
This is the final room downstairs, which is our guest bathroom. We started out by pulling out the old, awkward corner vanity, and I built this new custom one that fits a lot better, and then we laid this black hex tile instead of that old brick vinyl flooring that was in most of the house. This is the first of three bedrooms upstairs and it is the biggest because it used to be the master bedroom. Like the rest of the house, we painted everything and added new flooring, but the biggest change in this space is obviously these bunk beds that we built. Correction, that she built. <laughs> I didn't have anything to do with building these bunk beds. She did it. The bunk beds have been awesome for when we have family or friends come and stay with us, but really they ended up freeing up so much floor space because they're all flat along that main wall. And because this used to be a master bedroom, it also has a bathroom attached. And we're not going to go into crazy detail on this today because we actually have an entire video that shows this full renovation process and all of the materials we use and the finished results. This is our daughter's room and we have gone through a lot of different furniture layouts in this room, but in the end she wanted bunk beds to help save floor space, which does make sense because she is the oldest and has three younger brothers and likes to try and get away from them. This is our oldest son's room which he gets to have to himself and clearly I have a thing for built-in bunk beds. We did want to include at least one queen size bed in our kids room so that when we have family come visit we have that as an option. These built-ins were already here and so we just painted them along with everything else and they've been a great space for storage. So I just wanted to clarify again that I definitely did not build these bunk beds. That was all the DIY wife. Although I did help hold some boards here and there so maybe at best I was an assistant. This is the upstairs hall bathroom that our older two share and if you've watched our videos you've already seen this space and so be sure to check that out if you want more details on how this renovation went and the finished results and all of the details. So that concludes our house tour and as you can see with each house we've really grown our skill. We were able to grow our budget and hone in our style but to be honest I feel like we're always learning and growing still. And if you were to look at us today in the home that we're currently in you might think oh they've done this just by having lots of money and that is just not the case. We started with almost no money in a double wide home and we just started building and growing from there and now more than 10 years later we find ourselves here. But the journey doesn't end here. We're excited to take our experience and the things we've learned and we're going to be helping some of our friends fix up their home this year. We'll be going back to our roots on this one working with a tiny budget and doing a lot of the work ourselves to save costs. So we can't wait to take you along for the ride with us and this will actually be the largest series that we have ever put on YouTube. So join us over the next couple months as we transform our friends home and throw in a lot of surprises along the way. You did it, I did it, we both did it. Man. <laughs> Absolutely. 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 <laughs> I don't laugh because I want to emphasize it. It's nice. I didn't laugh until you did. Like the larger home. <laughs> Your chair is squeaking. <laughs> what the heck? Oh. I just squeak tested these chairs. Dude, that is absolutely ridiculous. Stop. Get that squeaker out of here. More cohesive. 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 <laughs> <Lord. laughs> How's my hair? <coughs> <coughs> like a tickle. Stop. Are stop. You okay. It's like they're just literally. Sorry. You still have that beard, right? Now. Okay. okay. Great. <laughs> Don't throw it down. We're not done. Oh. That was good, though. I